Welcome back to another episode of Excalibur CCG TV's uh, Comics Reviews. Stay tuned. Hey guys, Randy here, joined by Nathan. I'm Blake. I'm Blake, we're back. We made it to another episode. Yes, sir. Uh, welcome back. We're going to be taking a look at uh, comics from July 24th, 2013. Now, before we get going, I want to remind you this is going to be kind of a longer episode. If you're on the run, can't listen to us uh, right now, can't watch the show, uh, feel free to click down at the bottom download the mp3 uh, you can listen to us on the go in the car wherever you want to uh, if you want to see these lovely faces you can just watch us on our uh, web show so uh, last week we took a look at our top three books we're going to do things a little differently here we're still fine-tuning the show we're going to look at our number one books this week give you guys a little more time to get some more information on what it is that uh, made these books just that great for us. So we'll do that and also uh, at the end after the uh, number ones I've got a little surprise here for the guys so uh, with that being said let's jump in here let's roll with it. Here. You know what I, I'm gonna go ahead and start because okay. I just can't wait. Okay um, <laughs> yeah I've seen you by my, my pick of the week and I'm telling you I, I was almost I almost missed this book because I didn't see it on the shelf when I when I went in Wednesday and so on I back Saturday um, I, I picked it up and um, like this, this is a, a guy who who's just on his own smooth talker you know the art as opposed to the story have a real just flow to him where he's constantly moving and shaking but uh, he ends up getting you know, us the book yeah <laughs> this is the uh, subscription variant cover um, of uncanny the actually the, the the regular cover that came out looks awesome now yeah, it's number I, two I really way. believe that this book is poised to be one of the next big books out of dynamite um, but he runs into a, a, a female who obviously where she's coming from he, he gets in over his head in a car game with a guy who just you know and he's he's in a foreign country and uh, it seems like he has a power to where when he touches someone's Flesh that he can kind of see their memories or you right. know gain something from it. He and, kind and of has rogues power. So from well, the and that's what that's kind of where the title comes from is that it's kind of an uncanny ability. Right. And that's where we get this uncanny from. But at first we see that it really doesn't uh, maybe care about too much. He really doesn't have many people to care about. So he just moves on from one grip to the next. So we open up in this number two with him. Losing all kind of money to this big casino owner, thinking that he had him in the pocket, he didn't, and now the the goons are after him. Okay, right. But he has a mysterious woman. I'm starting to see a lot of uh, really great stories coming out, and a lot of strong female lead characters coming out, which we'll talk a little bit about that in a little bit. We will. Um, but he has this uh, mysterious and also pretty uncanny herself person trying to help him out while these thugs are shooting at him and he has one chance to really uh, escape this country that he's in to get away from these guys and there he contacts the best forger but basically what ends up happening is we have this casino ball slowly closing all the avenues off to where this guy could get away right and so the last choice he's left with is to go to a guy who can forge papers for him and he said he kind of funnels him in to go in to see this guy and he's like you know name your price anything i need passport papers i need to get away let's do it now and he's like well the price is you i got family too you know and it's like it was just one of those moments where you're like man and then um he he escapes and he gets away but i'm gonna tell you i i could spend all night talking about this book but like the from the art style to the real uh, noir overtones that are kind of dominating some of my favorite books right now, it's got an ebb and flow where I cannot wait to see what comes out of these characters in this book. It really is an uncanny story, though. I'm a huge fan of crime comics, and Dynamite is going to give us another one a couple of weeks from or, or a month or so from now, and then later on they're going to give us. Uh, X-Con by Dwayne Swierzynski, which I'm totally psyched for because Swierzynski is an amazing writer. But um, 
What I like here, well, actually, the thing that upset me was that those, those wonderful Packers and uh, Diamond Comics, and if you uh, watch, you know what I'm talking about, damaged just about every single one of the, the regular covers there of the Sean Phillips cover. I love Sean Phillips art. I was upset I couldn't get that, and I had to get this cover. I do like this cover, but I love Sean Phillips. Yeah, I, lo I like the other cover, too, but in the same sense that at least it's a first print cover. And yeah, yeah so, well, there, there is yeah. that. But I, I like the fact that uh, this here, Andy Diggle is you know taking his strengths, which he was honing on his story arc there in um, um, Thief of Thieves, and he's bringing that experience here with that style of comic to... Uh, dynamite. Uh, I, I do like what you, you were saying there. They are funneling him now. They're cutting off every single, and the, the one choice he ends up making is the choice that he did not want to make. Uh, you know, he, he's like, uh -uh, no, I'm not getting myself involved. It's kind of the, the typical story that you get where, uh, you know, somebody shows up that is, hey, we need to recruit you to this group kind of thing. You've seen that in other books, but it's well done in this. Right, obviously, in the establishment of the main character before they like launch into the larger story, which I think they're about to do in number three when it drops, and it's setting it up, but there's nothing like a guy who has his mind set on one possible goal, and there's nobody that can stand in the way to get him. I can't get enough of that. Well, honestly, I, so. I didn't read the book, but I think one of the things that's really interesting about what seems to be going on in a lot of books we're reading now is that a lot of books have this noir feel yeah. oh, it's without it in really being stale in any of the books. I mean, every one of them seemed to be approaching it from just a slightly different angle right. um, to keep it you know, sort of fresh, but we're also probably going to get into that a little more in just yeah. a minute. Yeah, a little bit of my um, criticism would be that Aaron Campbell, while his art is really solid, there are a few points in time where maybe the facial features aren't the best, the strongest, uh, most well-drawn that they could be. It's really nitpicky because yeah, that, his action and everything else in it is top-notch. Yeah, no, I mean, it's a great story. Pick it up. I mean, there's there's really, like, this is one to watch. I, I really think it's poised to blow. Now, we'll have to see in the number three, but... I agree. Well, let's move on to my number one here. I'll leave you for uh, last here. Saving the best. Uh, saving the best. Uh, Rock, the Rocketeer and the Spirit, Pulp Friction. Love the play on words there. Number one came out. Of course, this is also a subscription variant. I could not pass up a Darwin Cook cover. Always love his Hey, wait, art. can I ask you why that um, all your number ones that you're so excited about, we never ever see in the store? <laughs> like, this, <laughs> this, guy here, this guy here got the books. He I picked did. it up. I got it. He picked it up. Uh, we, we should still have a copy there. I can uh, snag it for you. But uh, with this, what you get is you get uh, Will Eisner's The Spirit mixed with Dave Stevens' uh, The Rocketeer. Both pulp characters. I know this seems kind of redundant for me, especially when I picked a character or a book last week where the character was, was kind of a version of the Rocketeer. But what makes this book so good is that you have Mark Wade uh, yeah, yeah, handling the pen here. And he's giving us this, uh, you know, Betty, who is uh, the, the Rocketeer's girlfriend, is based off of Betty Page. Yeah. Uh, they, he, she was friends with... Uh, Dave Stevens there, and he helped her out in a lot of ways with gaining back her uh, rights to some of the stuff sure. she did. But so that's who this character's based off of. And here she is, she's posing, all this different stuff, and suddenly this character, she finds somebody murdered. Somebody that was supposed to be across the world in the spirit city and should have been un uh, impossible to have flown across the world in the 1940s there and wind up dead. So uh, the spirit and his crew fly over. You have the classic, both sides thinking the other side's a villain, trying to, to snub Betty, uh, Betty and end up uh, uniting there together. The other part of this book that is an absolute treasure for me is that it's Paul Smith on art. And Paul Smith's a classic uh, artist. He did some of the X-Men back in the day. But uh, more importantly, and if you guys haven't checked out the book, check it out. It's so much fun. Oh, uh, it. One called uh, Leave It to Chance that he drew. And uh, James that. Robinson of Earth 2 was the writer on okay. that. Fantastic art there. That's where I really fell in love with his work. Uh, 
But uh, the, the thing that's going to make me kind of sad with this book is I don't think that Smith's going to continue as a writer beyond a certain point. I don't know if there's scheduling or, or something there. Or someone else takes over. So it's I'm, I'm losing. Just as good. Yeah, yeah, I'm losing that part, so I'm already feeling some anxiety over that. But uh, just the way that they craft, uh, Wade crafts this story, he, he throws in... Uh, terminology all throughout it that's that's used during that time period, and it doesn't feel like someone who's who's gone and looked up and found this word and put it into a story. It feels very natural throughout oh, absolutely. it. I always love when a, when an author is able to pull those little tidbits, uh, ancient lore, you know, or whatever you know it is. Well, in, like, in where this they book, get this stuff? It is. It. I I couldn't agree with you anymore. Uh, I mean. And it's a perfect, it really is. If you didn't go get that book this I week, you I need to go get this book. I'll make sure you get it. It's the perfect book to be reading this time of year. It's a classic. It's not very heavily burdened with a lot of uh, hmm. you know, overly dark story. Yeah. Uh, yeah really and the not. art, it really does reflect really well the story. And the pacing of the book is really great. But, I mean, this is really Mark Wade's forte. It, yeah. Well, I, 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 I mean... Putting a pen to paper seems like Mark Waite's voice. <laughs> it right does. Now. Uh, the it guy does. is so freaking talented. Uh, what another thing about this book? I like that how he's able to connect the two groups of people there, sure. so that it doesn't feel like uh, there's there's some forced way. That right. It's it's neat how he does that. The other thing to me is that you've always that's always been kind of strange. Is you have this this guy Cliff who's just kind of a a, a nobody pilot. And he's got this gorgeous Betty as his as his girlfriend, and you're like, how does this work? And just her reaction at the end with seeing you know the stud with the strong jawline like uh, the spirit, it, it cracked me up there. Uh, Works so well. You can kind of get a uh, the, the 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 picture representation here is a good idea of what goes on or her reaction to the spirit in the book. It's almost got like a grown up Archie kind of uh, uh, look to it. It does, but this this guy, if you've checked out DC's New Frontier, he was the one that did the work in that, and he also did uh, the Parker uh, novels. Oh yeah, out. he's yeah. the yeah. artist on yeah. that. Parker. So. Uh, that's yeah. Anytime I see Darwin Cook's work, that's that's a case. But the work on the inside. Is it does not have that feel. It's a totally different one. Oh, but okay. I love I just that, that, yeah. that classic. It doesn't look there. like the cover. Yeah. Let's, yeah, let's all look at it so that they can't see. Yeah. Oh, ooh, ooh, <laughs> wow. Look at that. I love this guy. It looks yeah. like the kingpin there. Anyway, the kingpin, if you can't see it, he. So this this may actually be an unofficial IDW just pick DC up the Comics book. Marvel Comics crossover <laughs> there. Who knows? But uh, anyways, the the spirit, uh, the Rocketeer. The Spirit, Pulp Friction, number one, great read. It was a great read. Talk to me. My uh, my number one for this week um, was Wolverine number eight. Um, the title of the book, the title of the story is Mortal. And you discover in this book that shortly after having fought off uh, the villain in the last issue of Wolverine, which was a virus from the microverse, They've discovered that Wolverine, and he discovers it himself sort of toward the end of issue number uh, six, that he's not healing. The, the mutant healing factor is, if not working incredibly slow, not working at all. And in the very beginning of this book, they hit you with it immediately that he does not have it anymore. He does not have the mutant healing power. And somehow the virus uh, degraded his cells to the point that they won't heal anymore. Yeah. And pretty much the rest of the book is an exploration of this character and how he would react. And um, so let me just say this. One of the nice surprises in this book, this is not normally a book Wouldn't that falls Wouldn't he bleed out in. through his claw wounds? Yeah, like the dude, they, show that. Like they show that in there. Um, there are two things I really don't like that seem to happen a lot in this in, with this form of medium. Um, one is specific to Wolverine. It's, it feels to me like at least every three or four years we go through a storyline where somehow his mutant healing ability is either greatly reduced or gone. That's the only thing that can yeah. stop him. Yeah, that. and then it also feels like a lot of times when there's a movie released or a comic book, the comic book that's coming out at the time, that title seems to try to mirror what's going on in the movie. And Spoiler alert here. Uh, even though it's in every trailer for the movie, they address Wolverine possibly being made into a mortal in the movie. Right. And that's essentially what happens here. Normally, 
I find that very labored. I find that when they try to mirror that and it just comes out of nowhere, it, it, it feels real forced and oh. it doesn't fit the character. In this one, it both of these things work. The storyline works. They approach the story from a much different angle. They show you things like, uh, for instance, right after he really figures out that he can't heal, he doesn't want to shave because he doesn't want to cut himself. Yeah. Because he then explains later, he's used to just taking a razor blade and kind of smacking in his face because it doesn't matter if he cuts it. Right. And then also later, like you alluded to, and as they kind of show you on the cover, you can see the, the little blood stains yeah. on his hands. He gets attacked by a mugger and he, you know, he unsheaths his claws. But almost as soon as the mugger goes away, he has to put him back because it hurts so bad to do it. They show him getting drunk, whereas anybody that reads this book knows that the kind of constant... As you see, you see him stumble around the bottle because he has to get close to alcohol poisoning. He doesn't right. feel anything. And then um, they do another beautiful little scene. We all know that in these universes where these characters live, a lot of people die, mm -hmm. and then they just come right on back in a couple of issues. And one of the characters they have not done that with is Nightcrawler. And yeah. he's been dead for quite some time. It doesn't appear, there doesn't appear to be any storylines where he's coming back. Uh, None that you can see from the book. Not from that, but from San Diego Con. Well, sure, they have, sure. That happens. And, uh, so in this issue, he goes and visits the statue of his friend and acknowledges that for him, if there's a good possibility that if he died, it would be forever if he remains in this condition now. I'm not, we all know that for this book to continue in the way that it does, they'll have to get over this. But, well, <laughs> 2014 is being called the death of Wolverine, so. Um, uh, but, it, it'll be interesting <laughs> to deal with this character as a breakable human being. Yeah. When so much of how the Wolverine acts is based on his knowledge that if you hit me, shoot me, blow me up, try to drown me. I'm probably going to make it through it. So I can just come at you full force. He's kind of a juggernaut. He's and, not uh, gonna... and well, so... I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, like Wolverine, I mean, he, you know, this is happening like back in the day with the death of Superman thing. You know, it's like when you create a character that is so powerful, then how do you stop them, you know, besides taking away one of their powers? You know sure. what I mean? And uh, Wolverine is one of Marvel's biggest characters. So, like, I'm... I'm really wondering what you're saying in, in 2014 if they're going to kill him off. If, that, if that's like their death of Superman thing, or well, is he going to stay dead? It's, who, who it's going to be something that happens. Uh, I mean, you've seen with Superman, you've seen with Batman, Captain America, um, who, whoever else there. They've killed off major characters there. It's, it's only for a period of time. To me, my thing is, kind of like you. If it's done in a way like with this book that it's believable, that you can see that it happens, that it has this purpose other than being a little ploy to well, you know, boost sales, and maybe, I'm, maybe I'll me go with it. Clear it up here. Uh, so for me, the thing that makes this interesting is it's not just the loss of a power. It's that that recklessness is ingrained in Wolverine's personality. The power right. is not what makes him reckless. He's a reckless individual who just happens to be able to live through his own recklessness. But you're talking behavior. about about years of of ingrained reckless behavior. Right? Right? And right? So I mean, he's been a, around to for so explore long. Explore how that would change his personality as a not just a hero, like but a as a human being. Huge shock. Yeah. I mean, not in, in the, for a while there. It, it's almost it almost takes you back. He appears almost cowardly about living because now he knows right. I can't go out and get hit by a car and get up and walk away from it. Right. And uh and it it's just a really good read. If you're not reading Wolverine, this may be the time to hop on. Apparently big things are in store. Right. Well you know uh, what I, I just want to say before we get off here because that's a that's a great concept they're exploring with this character is that uh I haven't seen the movie yet but I want to so don't tell me about it. But you know <laughs> in, in the trailer they say uh what if I could make you mortal? And I was like, okay, well, then he's like, well, yeah, that sounds like a great idea because I've been around for a long time. I'm sure, I had a lot of pain, you know. <laughs> and then, you know, once they do take his powers and he unsheathes the claws and he bleeds out of them or whatever, it's like, maybe that wasn't such a good idea. You right. know what I mean? Maybe I should have just uh, <laughs> kept the course here. But. With this book, uh, Paul Cornell 
is a strong rider, a very good rider. I think kind of an underestimated rider in a lot of ways. And so the first story arc of Wolverine really came with some mixed reviews. A lot of people were, were saying, I don't understand what's going on. This, you know, this is not very clear. And, and it really, to me, I was kind of shocked. And so I guess he had this story where he wanted to get to this point. And this point right here was really his story he had mapped out and planned out to tell. That first part, maybe it was just like, let's find the way to get here. But I like to hear that you know a character as popular as Wolverine is now kind of back on track with uh, the writing on the book. Uh, I, I can't wait to see uh, Alan Davis get back on the art because that's one of my uh, top favorites. Well, that's our um, number ones here. Now, here's a little treat that I was going to throw in. I uh, We all three read one book this week that, to me... We, I think we all had a different kind of look at what, what we thought of the book. So I wanted to kind of get everybody's two cents on Lazarus number two. For me, it's Greg Rucka, who is, has a history of writing some of the most powerful women in comics and novels. Uh, he's given us Queen and Country. He's given us... Uh, both Sasha Bordeaux from Batman and Batwoman in Batman comics, and he's just gone through time after time giving us these characters where he's, you know, he blows us away. He doesn't give us the damsel in distress, the woman who can't do us. He gives us the, the toughest nails, the I'm going to put the pain aside and get done what I need to get done kind of book. And we saw that character in the first issue. But the first issue also was real introductory and maybe left out a whole lot of the the plot just to kind of give us an idea of what we're looking at with this character. Well, you know what? I don't mean to cut you off, no, but, but I think the first issue kind of set up a mystery of, like, who is this person that can take a shot to the dome, like a bullet right. to the head, and then get up and still come uh-huh. after uh-huh. him? Right. Like somebody like, like Wolverine would be able to do but um, with the Lazarus two, I think it broadened, and, and like this is uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say the name of the other title I'm thinking of because I'm gonna probably choose it for my number one next time it comes out. But um, this book is another one of those books where we're seeing like uh, some kind of apocalyptic thing happening, and then families coming into power based off of you know what they're able to control. And with this, it's they're able to. Uh, it's like their her name is Forever Carlisle. She's of the Carlisle family, right? And um, she she's of <laughs> yeah. Like <laughs> we say we say it. of the Carlisle family, but she's cho- like she I'd say is probably close to engineered to be right. their their ultimate protector and right. strong yeah. right. But I like let me tell you like back earlier what I was saying that we each kind of have, we like the same stuff, but then again, in our really true interest in comic books, lies all in a slightly different angle of the medium, which I think is cool, you know, that comes together to show. But in this one, I like books that don't hold my hand, that let me think between the lines, you know, read between the lines and see all the little nuances. And this book, to me, they're letting me be intelligent here. You know what I mean? That's a great way of putting it. I'm able to read this book. They're not saying, hey, bullet point A, B, and, and C, just so you know, you know, it's like, right. I'm intelligent enough to get it. No, and like, they're, they're, they're not holding my hand. This is a great book. And like, I don't, I was, I, it's, I, I almost picked it for my number one, yeah. but like with the uncanny stuff, I just love the smooth talkers, but more on it. I mean, like, what'd you think? Like, I, the reason it didn't make it into my number one is, well, really there, there are three reasons. Okay. First, it's really difficult, I think, for you to write a number two book that's going to be able to stand alone. And when I make these recommendations, I want the viewer, you, to be able to go and get this book and pick it up and start reading it. Sure. And I don't feel like you can do that with Lazarus 2. I feel like you have to have Lazarus 1 to make this make any sense sure, at all. Sure. Um, I also feel like this is not a book where you can sit down, gloss through it in 10 minutes, and be done with it. Because it does require you to be intelligent. It does require you to kind of think about what the characters are saying. Think about the dynamics right. that I are mean, going you on. Got, I mean, you got body language and still panels. I mean, all this stuff, and it's like, 
she she's really good looking, but at the same, you sense this really great power that she has within her. And, and she when she, I was you know it's when like, I was really done great. with this book, it, it, to me one of the great one of the indicators you've read a good comic book is you want to have that other comic book right yeah, there, right, right there. Right. Yeah. And I did want that, but I wanted it for the wrong reason. They had done all the good setup work in the first book. They had done a fantastic job in this book of fleshing out the world that you got introduced to in the first book. Sure. But to me, I I, I just wanted some more of Forever Carlisle. Mm-hmm. Doing well, some it more. Sounds like they're doing their job. Really, as comic book writers. Well, the things that's, that I see happen, I, I like that the father of the family maybe is not such a bad person as what the kids are. Kind of like no, the, the one like in the Jupiter's just, the one legacy. Kid is just terrible. Um, you have forever that is eventually it's going to happen where she's going to break free of whatever this, you know, even though she's engineered to be completely faithful, she's going to break free from this because she will find out what's going on to her. Uh, it has that weird taboo kind of, the the, two, the thing between the brother and sister that's, that's weird, but it's, it's one of those things you're like, the, you know, they can't, you know why forever is there. You know why she's there, but what she's there for can't possibly happen you know these two characters are way too interesting to see just like taken you know, off the board immediately like you said the the characters are so interesting and what he's talking about if you haven't read this book i really recommend you pick it up i'm gonna tell you why. me too because this too. <laughs> yeah it's, this it's, this book there like i said it's based on like something happening to where certain families and not a whole lot of them uh come into power and the Carlisle family is one that controls this agriculture. And they own territory just like the other families do. But basically, our, 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 our main character is Forever Carlisle. She's their enforcer, but she's genetically engineered to be completely loyal to the family. Right. All right. So what's so interesting is that we have kind of like a, the, the father who's getting older and calls a family meeting. And we get introduced to some of the other Carlisle family members, and one of them is the brother and sister, who they're kind of out like old, what is it, Los Angeles direction, yeah. and they're getting into some trouble that probably the father wouldn't approve of, and they don't think he knows about it. But you know, of course, our fathers aren't as stupid as we ever think they right. are. Right. You know, and uh, what what is so cool is that you know I don't want to get in too much because if you do, I really want you to pick up the book and read it. It's really great, but it's that. He calls a family meeting, and they make it like of a great importance. Like it doesn't happen every day. They don't get together right. every Sunday right. for dinner. No, no, no. You know, when they when call a family you. meeting, you show up. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's what was so cool is that when he dismissed, because the son is really unruly, and you can obviously see he's waiting for his father to die. Oh, right. You know he's, what I mean? He's, he's, he's going to make a power move. Back. He's totally he's, Jeffrey from right. Game of Thrones. Right. Totally. Yeah. He's, he's, he, I mean, yeah, he re- like he, but he's just ready for him to die so he can just take over and really screw up everything that his father Oh, yeah, doing. no, that's So right. really, like, when the family meeting's over and he asks Carlisle to stay, and she's really... Forever. Like, yeah, yeah forever. And they, they had, when he asked her to stay, and the guy, you know, it's really always the guilty who are always shouting, like, sure, you know what, like, and then that's kind of what happens is he's kind of like, you know, and, and it's really, we realize that this, and you, this, you the get father the sense is a real powerful guy, you know. Forever is not just their Lazarus, which is what they call, apparently every, it, you get the sense every, every, every family, family has, has Lazarus. 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 Yeah. And I think we and, need the other family's Lazarus here in this And book. so, and you, okay. yeah, there you go. and so I you, see. but you get the sense that he does not like his sort of naturally created offspring as much as he likes forever. I, I agree with that. And they sense that as well and despise the fact well, that... Well, dude, the one scene where where he gave forever a command and, you know, she's supposed to obey the Carlisle family and she didn't say, like, you know, she and he's like, the only way that she couldn't give me that information was if father ordered her not right. to. And that was like... This is going to be no, they didn't. Yeah, so. yeah, guys, uh, we could keep on talking about this. Uh, I don't want to pick up last two year off. Bye. Yeah, we're going to continue talking about this after we uh, end the show, obviously, because it, it's so intriguing. Uh, before we go, 
I just have to say, I, w I wasn't able to talk about it. Clone number eight, that's a good one to check out that came out this week. Clone is a solid, solid story. Also, Young Avengers number eight came out. Do you have any other ones that you'd recommend for people? Man, Thumbprint, num uh, thumbprints are, are, it's really good. It's got another strong female lead. I'm looking at that one. I'm, I'm really liking um, this comic that came out last week, Blood Brothers. Uh, if, you, yeah, if you don't know anything soldier. about East of West, Saga, or Thief of Thieves, you're doing yourself a disservice. And I really like, I don't know if I'm, I'm in a code here, but I cannot wait for this new Sandman miniseries <laughs> coming out with Neil Gaiman. Like, I'm right. so psyched for that. The, uh, any so, other good reads? Uh, Superior Spider-Man. You need to go yeah. ahead and hop on that. that one That's fun. a good read right now. Um, Crow Curari, if you're into horror comics, it's a, it's a really interesting story. Um, Just as God's Among Us. One yeah. that I didn't pick up, but after him talking to me about it, that it's, was a pretty interesting. It's really interesting. And then... Uh, they, out of the Mignola verse, uh, another sort of twist uh, horror type comic, but it's not really. It's Lobster Johnson. That's a good, right. good one. Sin of a Lotus, uh, also good. Also a noir book. Um, those are the ones I'd say out of all the material that I picked up this week. If you didn't go get those, you should hop down to the store and try to grab them now. I just want to throw out one more title. I'm gonna give it back to you. I picked up a book. It was the last one on the shelf. It was called Ballistic. Oh, and yeah. I cannot wait to see where this book goes. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Good recommendations all around here. Um, if we've entertained you, if you uh, have liked the show, feel free to press like, uh, to share, to subscribe with us. If you're not already subscribed, tell other people about us. We want you to respond, to tell us, you know, yeah, I agree. Hey, this is a great one that you didn't review to you check guys out. Up. Something like that. No, I, I really that don't want to hear that. that. <laughs> if, if, if you think that, please go watch somebody else's. Um, you know, maybe they'll float your boat. But uh, we're we're from Excalibur Comics here in uh, Shreveport, Louisiana, and uh, in Texarkana as well. It's uh, Shre or Excalibur Comics, or, or I'm sorry, Excalibur CCG dot com where you can find us or our channel is Excalibur CCG TV. Feel free to uh, get in touch with us. Uh, as I said earlier, I'm Randy. I'm Blake. I'm Nate. And we will see you next week.